Okay, hello, uh, welcome to uh, the first lecture uh, for class one for Game Programming Foundations 2. And as a quick uh, overview of what we're going to do today, let's start off with uh, discussing the uh, syllabus and the course expectations. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what you need to be able to be successful in this class along with that and uh, what uh, assignment zero and the survey uh, that you need to take look like. And then we're going to go ahead uh, and get started now with those things. So let's start off with the syllabus. Uh, so the syllabus uh, I'm going to switch the view so you can see that. So give me just a second to do that here. So the syllabus, we'll take a look at that first. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, so here we are uh, looking at the, the course syllabus for the class. And in looking at this, let's uh, quickly read through uh, the, the contents of this. Let me just put it at a zoom level where you can see it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing here is again this is uh, 1802 game programming foundations 2 you should have already had game programming foundations 1 and completed that successfully if you did not complete that successfully uh, then i don't know how you're in the class but you're going to have a rough time with this class i think if you did not successfully complete uh, game programming foundations 1. Uh, this is section 51 so when you turn in your assignments make sure where it requires a comment block to put section 51 at the top uh, we are meeting Monday and Wednesday, 5 to 7.15. Uh, a little caveat about that, though. Uh, the lectures are mostly throughout the semester going to be posted online. Uh, but if we do meet, it'll be in 256 uh, Advanced Technology Center. That's in kind of the gaming, gaming commons area. Uh, you should all be familiar with that and have had classes there previously. Uh, instructor information. My name is Paul Yost. Uh, if you refer to me, feel free to address me as Paul. Um, we don't need to be super formal in here. Uh, my office is 307 ATC building. So if you need to come to office hours uh, and you have something scheduled, uh, that's if you look at the entrance to the planetarium, take the elevator all the way up to the third floor, uh, get off the elevator, turn left, turn left again, go through those glass doors, walk all the way back, turn right on the first door on the left there. So uh, if you need to come and see me, that's where my office is. My office hours for this semester are 1.30 to 2.30 and also 4.45 to 5 uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, 4.15 to 5. And so I'll be available for those office hours uh, either by phone or Zoom conference if you schedule a Zoom conference. You can also text me. You can call me. Uh, you can email me to arrange uh, a meeting or uh, in-person appointment. And we'll talk a little more about those office hours here in just a second. Uh, that phone number is my mobile number, uh, so you can send me text messages or call. If you call and I don't answer, leave a voicemail, because if I already don't have you in my contacts, I might assume you are trying to sell me a extended car warranty or something uh, like that. And so I may not answer if I don't recognize the number or if I'm busy. So leave a voicemail and I'll call you back. Uh, my email address, pyost at shawnee.edu. That's the university address. Feel free to send me uh, an email message uh, on there if you have a question or a problem. And I'll get back to you uh, within uh, a reasonable amount of time, hopefully. All right. Now, special note about office hours. Uh, since we're in the middle of this pandemic, I'll be conducting my office hours remotely, at least primarily so. So that means I'll be fully available by email, text messages, uh, mobile phone, uh, if you call me, uh, Facebook uh, Messenger, Discord, you can contact me in any of those ways. Um, and the main thing, though, uh, I would suggest sending an email or a text message. Those are more immediate uh, ways to get a hold of me. Uh, maybe even call me and leave a voicemail, and I'll get back to you. So if you uh, need it, I'm also available for face-to-face -face meetings uh, during those times or at any other time, really, including uh, weekends and uh, evenings. But I'm more than happy to come in and meet with you face-to-face, uh, -face, just make an appointment with me, contact me, make an appointment, and we'll get something set up. Also, when you come to see me face-to-face, -face, be sure to wear uh, some sort of face mask. 
Uh, and I might, when you set up that appointment, have you meet me in a classroom just to make sure there's enough room for social distancing. But I'm okay with meeting in my office as well. All right, textbooks. There are no textbooks for this class. Everything uh, will be kind of handed out to you or provide, handed out meaning provided on the uh, course page. Uh, and it's going to be up to you to make sure you get all of that information and look at what's on the course page. Course site, make sure to read it, uh, make sure to uh, observe any assignments that are posted or any take any quizzes that are posted. Uh, programming A Python programming reference book or two might be helpful as well, uh, since we are going to be using Python in this class. Um, and if you're interested in having one of those, uh, let me know and I can provide you some uh, options. Okay, now, the, this class, uh, let's read the course description. This class is a continuation of ETGG 1801 and is intended to further develop the student's understanding of the simulation gaming production and implementation process. Uh, class activities are focused upon understanding of more advanced concepts and implementation techniques central to the game and simulation development process. Lab activities are focused on writing of simple yet complete interactive programs in high level programming language. Now, that being said, the way that I run this class, the course format is going to be as follows. We're going to have kind of distinct, two distinct phases in the class. Phase one, is going to be reviewing everything from last semester and making sure that everybody is on the same uh, the page with respect to that. Uh, and those concepts would include object-oriented programming, uh, additional object-oriented programming concepts like uh, inheritance, which most people probably didn't cover last semester, uh, trig uh, trigonometry and physics simulation, uh, particle effects, sprites and animation, network programming, file I.O., tile-based worlds, side-scrolling, uh, kind of universal scrolling. And that uh, phase I expect to take about five or six weeks. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how much we have to review and how long the review takes. So you are going to have some labs in this first section. I know I have some typos here. I'll fix those uh, before I post this. But the uh, that'll take about five or six weeks. Uh, and then phase... Two here. I'm actually gonna. Uh, that should say two and not three. Uh, phase two is the main project, uh, which will be a little more ambitious project than the assignments you have here. And the main difference there is that's your project. You get to pick what it does. You get to decide on the uh, mechanics of it, and you get to kind of either by yourself or as a team create some game that you think is really cool. And it's something your chance to create something that's worthy of putting in your portfolio uh, for when you go to look for a job. And Python uh, and Pygame, with what you have learned, you can actually do some really cool and well-polished things. We've actually had students that have created indie games based on their project they did in their freshman year. Um, so I want you to try to think of that, make something that you're proud of doing, make something that you're going to be uh, happy with at the end. And we'll talk more about that project a little bit later on. Okay, attendance. Since most of the lectures will be, uh, let me scroll down so you can read it. Since most of the lectures will be uh, posted as videos, it's going to be up to you to make sure you watch those and watch them in a timely manner. Uh, sometimes there'll be quizzes over the stuff we covered in the lectures. Sometimes there will be uh, uh, important things that will help you do things for your assignments or things that are necessary for your assignments. So you're the one that needs to be responsible for looking at that. And one thing I know from last semester, hopefully not as big a problem in this class because you all made it through last semester, but one thing I noticed is a lot of people, uh, or at least a portion of the people, decided not to watch the lecture videos, like they were not important to them. They decided to just blow it off. And then I've heard from other people that they watched the lecture videos, but they kind of watch them while chatting with people on Discord or playing games or uh, messing around on their phone or doing other things. And they didn't really pay attention to the content of that. What I would suggest you do is the all of my lecture videos are going to be posted on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to that, as I post new videos, you'll see the link to that come up. Uh, and you could watch those uh, when they're posted or during the normal class hours. I would suggest reserving time to watch them. They'll usually be, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to uh, an hour long. Maybe a little bit longer sometimes. Maybe a little bit shorter sometimes. But 
I would reserve the time to sit down and watch those in an undistracted environment. You need to find the discipline to make yourself do that. And one of the ways uh, that some students said uh, led to success last semester were either having watch parties where they got together with other people and watched them. I don't know about doing that in the pandemic unless they're roommates of yours. But another way that I heard that was successful is to watch it on a smart TV or uh, a device where you're not sitting at a keyboard with other distractions with a web browser and Discord chiming and other things like that. But however you do that, you're going to have to find a way to watch the videos and think about the stuff in the videos. And if you have questions, you need to ask me about them. Send me an email. Uh, send me a text message, whatever. But make sure that you're on top of that and you're watching those and doing that responsibly. If you don't watch those, then uh, you're going to have a difficult time with some of the material. It's important stuff and it's important not just uh, for success in this class, but success in the career that you chose and the degree that you chose. The, those are the stuff you learn in this class can be valuable. It's going to be valuable. And uh, the grading system uh, for this class uh, is listed there, 25% for each of the things, homework, programming, labs, and quizzes. Uh, like I said, that'll be more in the first half of the class, then we'll have a midterm. And then in the second half of the class, you'll do your final project, which will include possible milestone grades in that percentage. And then there'll be 25% for the final exam. And the final exam will be comprehensive. It'll cover everything uh, that we've covered in the class and I will have some additional lecture topics during this the final exam phase where I'll present some videos and post some things uh, so you need to watch those because those may be covered on the final exam those additional topics might. One additional note is you have to pass the final exam in order to receive a passing grade for the class and that is uh, the reason for that is not for me to be mean or to make it scary it's because learning the stuff in this class is important for your success and important for your development as a programmer, uh, as a uh, engineer, as a developer. So if you fail the final, then I'm going to give you a failing grade in the class because you're not ready to move on yet. So kind of like uh, any other thing, if you, uh, for example, don't know how to swim, it's a bad idea to let you move on to scuba diving. Uh, if you don't know how uh, to walk, it's a bad idea to st stick you on a uh, something like the ledge of the Grand Canyon and let you walk around. So the idea here is uh, I take grading very seriously. I take my responsibility very seriously. You have to pass the final to pass the class. Don't worry too much. I've taught a lot uh, and I've taught this class a lot, so I know that the test is not uh, too difficult uh, for you to do. Uh, the final exam will not be such that everybody will fail and everybody will have to repeat the class. The only way you'll fail the exam is either you don't try or you don't learn the material uh, or you have some other problem going on during the final exam and you just bomb the test, but make sure you take it seriously. Same thing for the midterm and the final project. All right, the grading scale is listed there. So you notice what does it mean to fail the exam or fail a class? Well, if you get anything above a 59, so 60 and above, considered passing. All right, a couple important rules. Uh, don't cheat. I don't like intellectual dishonesty. Uh, I treat uh, students with respect. I expect to be treated similarly. I view you all as uh, friends and that I'm trying to help learn some stuff. And so uh, I don't lie to my friends or cheat. Uh, so I wouldn't expect you to do that uh, either. I expect to be treated, treated with similar respect. So if you're having problems understanding stuff, or you're not doing well, or you're going to be late on an assignment by a day or so, send me a message and talk to me about it. Don't just get online and download something or copy somebody else's assignment and turn it in. So don't cheat in any way. I will deal with any type of academic misconduct or intellectual dishonesty uh, severely. Also, if we're in class and we're doing presentations or we're taking exams, don't be disruptive. Uh, people are paying to get ed an education. They're here because they want to learn stuff. And if you're playing around on the computer and, I don't know, having some... Uh, 
Overwatch session and being really loud and yelling and making noises, that's not okay. So you have freedom to do things, but don't abuse that freedom. Be polite, be respectful, uh, respectful, behave professionally, um, and don't disrupt other people. Okay, programming assignments. We're going to have some programming assignments. They will all be submitted on Blackboard. Uh, you have to complete them. They have to work right. They have to have the right comment block at the top. We'll talk about that in a little bit or actually later when we have an assignment. And any coursework uh, that doesn't have a specific due date is due by the end of the, uh, the semester. And the other thing is turned in means submitting it on the Blackboard course site. Don't just email it to me uh, or print it out and stick it somewhere uh, that you hope I find it. Make sure if you can't submit something on Blackboard to let me know, we'll try to figure it out. If we can't, then I'll make an alternate arrangements, but make sure I agree to that ahead of time. Okay, unclaimed and unreturned assignments uh, will be retained for 30 days past the end of the quarter, and then I'll throw them away. So if you take the final exam and you wanna see what your grade was, uh, don't wait till two years from now and then say, hey, I wanna see what my final exam was. So make sure to contact me uh, within that 30 day period. And then I'll get back to you. Other stuff will be graded on Blackboard. I will put comments on the, uh, type in comments on there when I grade it to give you feedback. Uh, so look for those when stuff gets graded as well. Okay, now this class is going to have some group assignments, uh, especially that project where you might be working with a team. And so it's important for this class and really your future career as a developer to be able to work with other people. So during group work, I expect you to observe some guidelines. One, follow directions. Uh, at the beginning of the project or any project, uh, make sure that uh, you're doing what is asked of you. Uh, I might develop some skeleton code and designs with you and then turn you loose on modifying them or changing them. Uh, or if you're working on your project that doesn't use the stuff that we did in class and you need help, let me know. I might help you with that, but I'm not going to write the code for you. So it's your job to understand and work with any of the code that I provide and rather than just say, well, what you gave me didn't work. Well, it was probably a skeleton or a uh, overview or a, uh, some sort of a pseudo code. Maybe it's up to you to figure that out, but I'll be giving you guidance. Make sure to follow those directions. Also, when you're working on that group assignment, your project, make sure to stay busy. That'll be primarily, uh, uh, during class time, but you'll also be expected to do some stuff outside of class time as well. So in other words, I will give some class periods where you just work on your project or you work on the labs that I assigned. I'll say, okay, today you're going to work on the lab, go ahead and work on it, ask if you have questions. So, but it is expected that you'll probably have to put in some time out of the class time as well, especially when you get to your project. So if you are working on a project and you're in a group and you can't find something to do, then you need to talk with the other people on your team. Talk with them, look at the project uh, board. If you have one uh, set up, you should set something like that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, also ask me if you don't know what to do and I'll talk to the other people on your team. And if everything else fails, uh, then pair up with somebody and divide up some part of the part code that they're working on and be a part of that. So don't just sit there and do nothing. Another thing that's important is to communicate with the people that are on your team. And that goes without saying that you can't just go off and do your own thing. If you're part of a team, if you, it doesn't mesh well with the entire project. So one of the things is to stay away from, uh, a few of the extremes that I've seen in the past on group projects, not just in these classes, but in the workplace, uh, in my business, in other businesses. So the first one is the hero. Stay away from being the hero. In other words, uh, people who say, uh, oh, I'm the best programmer here, so I'm just going to do all of the work myself. That's a bad idea. Uh, the other, uh, well, that's a bad idea for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them being that if you get stuck and you uh, are the only one who wrote code, then you can't really bring other people in to help because nobody knows what your code does or what it looks like or how it works. Uh, the other thing is that that's uh, not how development teams work and it'll take you longer to do things yourself uh, in a lot of cases than if you have somebody else helping you, even if 
their version of help is to do pair programming or do art assets or uh, do sub modules that you're using, divide it up and try to not be the hero. The second type to avoid is the hermit, uh, who is somebody who's not really the hero, but they withdraw from the project and they're like, well, uh, I don't know, Susan knows more than I do and is a better programmer than me, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to sit back and do nothing. Don't do that. Be active, ask questions, uh, have Susan or whoever explain the code to you. Uh, as they're writing it, uh, look at the code. If there's something that doesn't make sense, ask questions about it. Uh, suggest if there are parts of the code that don't make sense that comments be added or add the comments yourself to help maintain the code, and that's important. The third type uh, that is uh, an extreme to stay away from is the floater. And that's something who's not really withdrawn, and they get involved in parts of the project, including parts that are handled by others, but they spend time talking about doing stuff and distracting the other people on the team rather than doing stuff themselves. In other words, they'll kind of float from one person to another person. like, oh, what are you working on? Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go over and bother somebody else now. Uh, be an actual worker. Be part of the team. Be involved. If you feel like you're not, then talk to the other team members. Hey, what can I do to help? How can I be valuable on this team? <coughs> and if that fails, talk to me and say, hey, I feel like I'm not really contributing to this project and I want to. What do you suggest I do? Then we'll all talk together and say, okay, well, what, what's work going on? Why are you guys not communicating? But communication is a really important part of working with a team. All right. Also pay attention during any stand-up meetings. And a stand-up is meant to be like a short meeting with your team where you all like get together. It could be on Discord or, or wherever. And you say, okay, where is everybody at on your parts of the project? Everybody chimes in. So don't just say, well, it's not my part of the project, so I'll just let them all talk, because if it's a real project, all those parts have to work together. They have to mesh together at some point. So make sure you know what everybody else is working on. Even if you don't know all the details of what they're doing, have a good general idea of where they are, uh, how long it's going to take them to do stuff, how that relates to what you're doing. So make sure you do that. Also, make sure to participate in the, any planning phases. So very rarely uh, will you immediately just start writing code. Generally, you want to plan out a project and say, this is what we're going to do before you start doing it. In other words, it's kind of like, think of it like building a house. You don't just say, hey, let's build a house and then start hammering boards together and hope that it turns into a house. Now you have to think about it. You have to plan things out. You have to have an idea in your head and a paper and a design document, at least that says, what's the goal? How does it work? What's it look like? Uh, and there's a very different architectural plan you need for a office building than you need for uh, a garden shed than you need for a three-bedroom house. So you have to plan ahead and think about those things and think about what you're doing. And be a, uh, it makes sense to be a part of that during the planning phases. So make sure you follow that and make sure your voice is heard. If you think that something's a bad idea, talk about it with your team. Uh, vote on it. Uh, democratically or uh, talk about it try to convince them but if the majority of the people say eh, I don't think that that's a good idea uh, then listen to that uh, or say well uh, maybe revi we'll re revisit it later also work towards any milestones that you've set up so generally everyone will share uh, the same grade on any milestones we have so make sure you're working Ooh. excuse me toward those milestones and we'll figure out how, how we're going to do those when we get to the project port, or portion of the class. Exams and quizzes, uh, the midterm and final will be announced at least one week before they're given. So I won't give makeup midterms uh, or makeup final exams unless you have a uh, excused absence uh, for a legitimate reason. Uh, but I might give you quizzes at any time, post them on the Blackboard site. And you'll generally have a limited amount of time to take that quiz. So make sure you watch the Blackboard site, at the big, maybe log in at the beginning of every class period, every regularly scheduled class period, look for a lecture, look for a quiz, look for an assignment. Uh, and if there is one, make sure to look at the due date and then stay on top of that stuff. So don't like say, oh, I'm going to check out of this class until week six. And then I'm going to watch all the lectures at once, and I'm going to do all the assignments at once, and make sure to get, stay on top of it, because otherwise it's going to become overwhelming. All right, 
couple final housekeeping things. ADA statement. If you have uh, some academic accommodation need, make sure uh, to get that documented. In other words, contact the Office of Accessibility Services in uh, Hatcher. There's the phone number is on the syllabus there for you to call them. Uh, scheduled meeting. They can talk you through the process for that. If you already have uh, a documented uh, um, disability and some accommodation need, uh, they will send me an email, but I still want you to communicate with me. In other words, before the midterm, if you need something special, quiet place to take the exam, uh, some sort of larger font on the printed uh, version of the final exam so you can see it easier, uh, extra time, whatever it is that your accommodation allows, make sure to let me know before the day of the exam that you need want me to do that. Some people have accommodations and they don't feel like they need the uh, to, to do anything different. Some people feel like they need to have those things done. But in order for me to know that, I'm not a mind reader, so talk to me about it, let me know, and I'll work with you to make sure that we uh, uh, accommodate whatever your needs are. Also make sure you talk to the people in the uh, Office of Accessibility Services. All right, final thing, the Title IX statement here is that uh, Shawnee is committed to maintaining an environment that's free from retaliation, harassment, discrimination on the basis of a whole range of issues, race, color, genetic information, religion, age, disability, ancestry, national origin, uh, and so forth, uh, gender, gender identity, gender expression, uh, veteran status, military status, whatever. Uh, we're committed to making sure that you're not discriminated against because of any of this uh, things. So uh, the idea here is that if you feel like there's been some sort of harassment or some sort of discrimination, then it's important that you, or if you see that, uh, rather than you just being the victim, if you see somebody else that is doing something they shouldn't be doing or somebody that's violating some uh, of the, that uh, right to feel that you're safe, in that learning environment, then let somebody know. Uh, the main it could be me, but notice that uh, if you want to report concerns directly, uh, Monique Harmon is available. She's our Title IX coordinator. There's her phone number there. Uh, if you forget it, you can always go back and look at the syllabus on the course page and look at that. Uh, you can also talk to me about those kinds of things uh, if you need to. Uh, but if I listen and you tell me something and I feel like somebody else has done something that needs to be reported, then I'll have to report that uh, up to Monique Carmen. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean there'll be a formal, formal action, but uh, the people who have been a victim of that might be uh, entitled to have some sort of uh, recourse in the form of uh, helpful resources or some sort of accommodation. And the people who perpetrated that uh, may be in a position where there needs to be some disciplinary action taken uh, to prevent future uh, version and keep the campus safe. So again, take this seriously. If you see anything or hear anything, uh, report it. You can always look at the syllabus to get the phone numbers and you can always tell me about stuff as well. Okay, now, so that's the syllabus. Uh, a couple things that I want to mention about this class uh, before we move on any farther. Uh, I'm going to pause briefly to change the screen here and then I'll be back in one second here. So give me just a second. Okay, and we're back. Uh, the last couple things I want to do here is uh, we talked, we looked at the syllabus. Uh, you should be aware of uh, your, uh, at least in a general sense, what we're going to do this semester. Uh, you're going to going to review some programming concepts. Uh, we are also going to add some new uh, tricks. But one of the things I want to talk about before we uh, go on and talk about this assignment, this first assignment assignment zero and the survey that I want you to take is uh, I want to just briefly mention, oops, my teaching philosophy. And some of you have had me in class before for 1801. Some of you haven't. Uh, you will all have me again uh, next year. But there's my teaching philosophy is the verb phrase to teach doesn't make much sense. So the idea about to teach not making sense to somebody who's uh, part of their career anyway, part of their profession as a college professor, is 
uh, why would I, why would a person whose job to, is to teach people think the phrase to teach doesn't make much sense? And the reason that I, I feel that way is that if you think about other verb phrases like to like tap or to drop, those are all the object that that's happening to are all passive. Uh, to, to punch, to kick, to throw, to uh, eat. Th those things don't have any choice in the matter. But to teach, I can't like just teach somebody without them being open to learning or without them being actively involved in that process. So um, it just doesn't make any sense. So for example, uh, you need and you need to have that mentality as well. You need to think of that in kind of the reverse that you're you are in class Not for me to teach you things, but you are in class for you to learn things and the, there's a big difference between those and the way I think about myself and my teaching philosophy is my job is Well, let me say this uh, say it this way. I believe that computer programming and computer engineering and the ability to uh, design and create and build circuit board things with chips on them and be able to write programs that make things uh, happen either on a phone or on a game console or on the PC uh, or in an embedded system, uh, some sort of little circuit-based embedded system. The ability to do that is the closest thing we have to, be it, to being able to do real magic and to be a real wizard. So for example, I think of it as very similar to like, uh, at least a degree program as being very similar to, uh, like Hogwarts. Harry Potter goes to a school. He learns to do magical things, uh, by learning spells and other arcane incantations and practicing his skill and getting good at it and refining it. And he certainly has a talent for it, but, uh, even with his talent, he still has to learn things. And that's the way it is in the, uh, this degree. If you want to learn to do magical things and be able to create things and take part of your brain out and put it into a computer and get it to do exactly what you want it to do, you've got to spend uh, some effort learning those things and practicing them and practicing them again and learning how to do them. So part of my job is to not be a, a teacher. My job is to be a guide and make it as easy as possible for you to learn the things that you need to learn to be a better programming wizard, if we want to think of it that way. Uh, and so here's an example. I don't like the idea of like uh, having to drag people through things or force them to do things. Uh, certainly uh, there are times where the going is going to get rough and you're going to have to make the decision that you want to learn the stuff and you want it to work and you're going to figure it out. So you have to have a resiliency. Uh, and a certain level of commitment to uh, yourself to be able to learn the stuff that we're going to be doing in here. So if you look at something, go, oh, I don't know if that, that seems like boring to me. Don't do that. Learn it anyway. The, the tools that we're going to learn in here, you're going to use for the, the rest of your career in a lot of cases. And if nothing else, it's another tool in your toolbox for solving a problem down the road. You might get to be uh, 10 years into your career and remember, I remember we did something in that class that I can use now and I couldn't, you wouldn't be able to solve those problems if you didn't know that. So pay attention, learn the stuff, take it upon yourself to be self-motivated and self-directed and get those things done. Also be a part of that team. Uh, be proud of the work that your team is doing. Be proud of yourself for learning the stuff to be able to allow you to do that. Now, uh, I think about it like this. Uh, for example, if we're uh, on a mountain climbing expedition or we're hiking up to the top of some really tall peak and the going gets rough for you, then I want to be your Sherpa or your guide up that mountain. And at the top of the mountain, there's great things that you can do and great things that you can see and you'll feel great after having gotten there. But the going is going to get rough sometimes climbing up there. So I'm your guide. If you're struggling, let me know and I'll help you find an alternate route or we'll stop and we'll wait a little bit and we'll take a break and we'll uh, then we'll try again and we'll set goals and say, well, we'll go a little farther and then we'll take another break. We'll go a little farther and we'll take another break. My job is to be your uh, guide or your Sherpa up that mountain and it won't do you any good if I just tie uh, a rope around your ankles and just drag you kicking and screaming to the top of the mountain and say, look at all you've done because you won't 
gain the skills uh, you need to get there on your own by me dragging you there. Uh, so that means when you ask me questions about your programs or you need help, I might not just fix your program. If you say, my program is broke, can you fix it? Uh, I might say, well, what? how is it broken? What's it doing wrong? And then you might say, well, this part is working. I'll say, show me your code. And I'll look at your code. I'm like, well, why don't you look at line like, I don't know, 273 and tell me what you're trying to do on that line. Or what's the idea that you're trying to accomplish by this section of code here? And so I want you to learn how to learn and I want you to uh, kind of acquire the skills that are necessary for you to acquire skills. And that seems a little uh, self-referential or maybe paradoxical, but it's important for you to start developing those skills and have the, uh, a certain level of uh, commitment to yourself and commitment to your team and commitment to your project to try to do what you can to figure it out and get help when you need it. Uh, and so make sure to do that and make sure, so in other words, be active in your education and not just a passive, uh, observer saying, well, I, 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 in other words, I don't want you to have the attitude. Well, I got to get through this class and get a grade in this class. Don't think of it like a, a chore. Think of it like an opportunity to learn to do magical things. And again, to me, being able to program, take an idea out of my head and put it in a machine. And now that machine does that idea. That's just as magical as being able to take a magic wand and conjure up a spell and make a, I don't know, like a stick turn into a, uh, a walking stick creature or whatever, and, uh, or enchant and make an illusion that uh, shows up in the room. The difference between uh, Hogwarts uh, and Harry Potter and me and the university is that Hogwarts is not real and wizards aren't real, but with technology, you can do magical things in the real world right here. So I want to help you uh, gain that kind of uh, self-motivation and teach you how to learn. You need to learn how to learn. You need to develop the skills for developing your own skills. And you need to have that uh, kind of perseverance when things go rough or get rough or go wrong. Stick with it and I'll help you figure it out. I'm your guide. I want to do that. Okay, now... That's all for today, except don't don't go uh, shutting the video off yet. There are a couple other things I want to mention here quickly. Uh, complete the survey and complete assignment zero. Let's take a quick look at those because I think that's important. So give me a second while I switch the, uh, the screen here. Let's start with assignment zero. Okay, so assignment zero is really easy, has nothing to do with programming, but since we're doing most of our lectures uh, in this kind of hybrid online format, then I want you, uh, I want to go over this right now and I want to get to know you. Uh, so, so a lot of you I haven't had in classes before. So what I want you to do is you're going to create a PDF. And in that PDF, I want you to have the following things. In other words, you could actually copy and paste this code here, or this, not code, but this, this stuff here out of this, put it into a word processor, and then tell me your name. Tell me your student ID. Tell me what your major is post a picture of yourself. So that can be uh, like a selfie you take or your Facebook profile picture or something like that. Uh, I don't really care, but I want to see what you look like. So I have a name and a face that I can associate with each other because that'll help me get to know you. It'll help me remember who you are and put a name to the questions that come in or the other stuff. Uh, also tell me what your hometown is. And then I want you to write a little paragraph that describes why you're taking the class. And I want you to tell me what you hope to learn from this class. So that PDF you create should be only one page long. Uh, it's pretty easy to make PDFs. Uh, if you don't have Microsoft Office uh, a license for that, then there are, there are free alternatives to that that are free open source alternatives. The one I use, uh, I haven't used Microsoft Office in a really long time. Um, uh, I use a product called LibreOffice, which is kind of a free open source alternative to Microsoft Office, but you can, it has a little... Uh, a, a thing called Writer, LibreOffice Writer. You can create a document, you word process it, change fonts, add pictures, edit the document, and then you can export it to a PDF really easily by just clicking a single button or going to File, Export as PDF. Uh, and then turn that, that's what you're going to turn in on the course site, is that PDF file. It should only be one page long. Um, and make sure to observe this due date. This is due uh, by... 
uh, Wednesday, January 18th. I think I have that date right. Actually, that should be not 18. That should be 13. All right, I will fix that and post that. But make sure to observe the due date that's on the actual assignment. I don't know where I got 18 from. 10. It should be the 12th, actually. No, the 13th. That should be the 13th, not the 18th. And this is worth points, so make sure to do it. Make sure to turn that in. Now, the other thing that you're going to have to do is there's going to be a pretest posted. This is the PDF version. I'm going to try to get a Blackboard version up. But this has a little uh, survey part where I ask you some questions about this. And then it has a little skill assessment so I can tell what things I need to review and how much I need to review those. So here, uh, for example, here's a right triangle. I'm asking you, this leg is dx, this uh, leg is dy length. What's the hypotenuse? There's theta. So I'm going to ask you to provide uh, actual values for these uh, things in here. And that could be in the form of a formula, like square root of something, or uh, for dx and dy, you would calculate those based on these points. Like how far is this over from that? Well, there's the x. There's the x. How far is 120 from 100? Put that in there and so forth. So fill in those. Uh, here are some conversions between radians and degrees. Uh, fill those in. And then here are some other questions there. So what I want you to do is go through, do the best you can at answering these questions. Uh, take some time. Treat this like an assignment. Uh, you will write some code for these ones down here that you'll have to submit. But this is going to give me an idea of where you are in uh, what you know and what you remember from last semester. And well, I'm going to use that uh, to so take this seriously. I'm going to use this to uh, know what to do going forward for the next few classes. So what do I need to review? How much time do I need to spend reviewing it? It'll be based on this, so make sure to do that. Also, make sure to fill in your name and your major on there um, as well. Okay, so uh, that's uh, all we're doing today. Uh, so what I would suggest you do with the remaining time you have, uh, that took about 40 minutes. So with the remaining time you have today, which is a considerable amount of time, I expect you to complete that survey, uh, complete assignment zero. You can get both of those things done in the time that's remaining for the class today. Uh, so again, work on those, get those done. Uh, everybody stay safe, wear a mask if you go out, wash your hands if you touch anything uh, outside of your own place. Uh, and I will see everybody back here uh, for Wednesday's lecture. See you guys soon. Let me know if you have any questions or problems.